Early Life When you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die the world cries while you rejoice, says Robin Sharma. John Gabriel Perboyer was born on 6 January 1802 at Le Puch, now in the commune of Montgesti, in the Diocese of Cahors. He was one of eight children born to Pierre Perboyer and Marie Riggle. He was baptized the next day. His father was a farmer who used to cultivate cereals and grapes. He lived in the time of Napoleon's military supremacy and the country was drained by him. So, in those days each and every member of the family members had to work. The young John assisted his father in farming like sowing the seeds etc. He was educated in the school run by the parish priest but as for high bad luck the revolution disarranged the school system. While he was returning his uncle, Father James thought that he had the vocation to priesthood and Perboyer had to stay back to continue his studies. This changed in 1816, however, after his younger brother, Louis, was accepted into the Vincentian Seminary recently founded in Montauban by their uncle, Jacques Perboyer. C.M2 John Gabriel was asked by their parents to accompany his brother until he had adapted to his new environment. To his surprise, John Gabriel felt drawn to follow this life himself. 3. Wikipedia His parents blessed him and gave their full support to him. A priest for Congregation of the Mission he finished his primary studies under the guidance of his uncle, Father James Perboyer. In 1810 he was admissioned to Vincentian Congregation. One day Father James introduced his nephew to Perboyer, who was working in China. John also wanted to work there in his lifetime. He made his final commitment to the congregation on 28th of December, 1820. Afterwards he was called to the mother house for his advanced studies. He wanted to experience the Almighty God and of his will for mankind. This aim helped him to grow deeply in his spiritual life. He was a priest and spiritual director. As a subdeacon he was sent to a boarding school at Montdidier. There he had shown his skill of understanding and directing boys. He was ordained a deacon and sent to Phosphate of Montdidier. He was ordained on 23rd of September, 1826 and offered his first his first mass in the chapel of the Mother House of Daughters of Charity. Having ordained a priest, but contrary to it he was given orders to go to St. Flower for teaching theology. Here too he succeeded with well-prepared lectures to the seminarians. He was good example to them for his manner. In the year of 1827, he was transferred to the boarding school of St. Flower. He developed the school in such a way that the strength of the student increased from 20 students and 200 students. His brother Louis ordained a priest and sent on a Chinese missions but unfortunately, he was dead on the way. Then he wanted to replace his brother. But he transferred to Paris as a novice master in 1832. The spiritual teaching which Father Perboyer gave to his students concerned mainly the person of Jesus Christ. He would say, Christ is the great teacher of the knowledge which gives true light. He is the light, the model, the ideal. The saints in heaven are nothing else than the portraits of Jesus Christ risen and glorious while those on earth are the portraits of Jesus Christ suffering, humiliated, oppressed. 
Let us keep our eyes fixed continually on Jesus Christ. In all things, let us enter into his sentiments and make his virtues our own. His classmates started go for missions to China. He approached the higher authorities for the consent but he received a negative reply. At last he was able to convince them and succeeded in it. Journey to China he stared his journey on a stagecoach form Paris and reached at L.E. Haver. He embarked on March 16 but on the way, he was affected by the sea sickness in the Bay of Biscay. Having journeyed about five months, he reached Macau on 29 August, 1825. He was introduced to Chinese culture, language, customs, and manners. He prepared himself to begin his work. He traveled through Haup and route to Hanum which was in the center of China. The foreigners were given death for entering penalty so he changed himself as a Chinese man and got inside the city. This journey took him a month and reached the last mountain saying the way of the cross and climb the mountain. From there it took four days for him to reach his own residence where St. Francis Regis Selt stayed two years before. Began his work. The huge place contained 600 Catholics and he did want to cover the place within a year he prepared neophytes for baptism and he gives sacraments to the people. He worked there year and a half ceaselessly. This place content to the Catholics and 50 villagers here he worked all the day and the night. He instructed pagans and convert them. He also has focused on the youth who had vocation to priesthood. He formed them, took to the parish and started training them for the future priests. He had some faith crisis in his life and sufferings. The interiors of rings made him to be awake and all the night and had inability to eat. He had vision of the Lord on the cross which motivated him strive for his people. Way of Martyrdom Father John Gabriel made retreat in 1839 in the month of September and started his missionary works. There came information that a band of Chinese soldiers are coming for them. At first they did not believe but later they did. They were scattered and they escaped. Fr. John was hiding in the forest. He went to Catchiest House and next day went from there. Chinese soldier caught catechumen who was offered of 300 ounces of silver revealed the place of John who was hiding in the forest. This action of modern Judah made the starting of his sufferings. They caught and took him to their camps. It was September 17th in the morning, during his interrogation for John confessed about his priesthood. Because of the heavy chains there were the swellings on his body. Even he was unable to stand up and but he had to walk 12 miles to appear before the court. A kind-hearted Chinese offered money to carry him on a chair. Finally, with so many suffering, he appeared before Viceroy. He was a man who hated Catholics. John was tortured for two months. He was asked to stamp on the cross and worship an idol but he denied doing so. As a punishment for it, they made him to kneel on the glass pieces. Then began a period of waiting for the imperial confirmation. Perhaps John Gabriel could hope in the clemency of the sovereign. But the war with the English erased any possible gesture of goodwill. Thus, on September 11, 1840, an imperial envoy arrived at full speed, bearing the decree confirming the condemnation. With seven criminals the missionary was led up a height called the Red Mountain. As the criminals were killed first, 
Perboy were reflected in prayer, to the wonderment of the bystanders. When his turn came, the executioners stripped him of the purple tunic and tied him to a post in the form of a cross. They passed a rope around his neck and strangled him. It was the sixth hour. Like Jesus, John Gabriel became like a grain of wheat. He died, or better was born into heaven, in order to make fall on the earth the dew of God's blessing. Many circumstances surrounding his last year of life, the betrayal, the arrest, the death on a cross, its day and hour, are similar to the Passion of Christ. In reality, all his life was that of a witness and a faithful disciple of Christ. Saint Ignatius of Antioch wrote, I look for him who died for us, I yearn for him who rose for us. Behold, the moment is near in which I will be brought forth. Have compassion on me, brothers. Do not prevent me from being born to life. John Gabriel was born to life on September 11, 1840, because he always had sought him who died for us. His body was brought back to France, but his heart remained in his adopted homeland, the land of China. There he gave his witness to the sons and daughters of Saint Vincent who also wait to be born to heaven after a life spent for the gospel and for the poor.